Well, hello there. You are in my hallowed uh, bait room. So uh, as you can see, there's all sorts of tubs there. I'm not going to show you what's in those. There's all sorts of uh, things, Pro probably a few nice big spiders and things as well. So, um, but today I'm going to talk about feeders for natural for natural venues. Um, I'm by no means an expert in feeder fishing. Um, and I'm still learning at this game as well. But I've just come back from the Feeder Masters uh, two-day final at Tamar Reservoir, or Upper Tamar Lake, should we say. And um, uh, I spent four days there, and I've been doing a bit of feeder fishing on rivers, um, and also been doing a little bit of practicing here and there as well, getting things right. So um, I'll show you what I took to Tamar and why I took it and um and then we can go from there really so uh, i'm going to show you basically natural water um feeders for catching roach and skimmers and maybe some perch and things so that's that's what i'm going to go through today now at tamar um i took with me a great big bag of feeders two two tubs went in this in this um two of these all to the brim with feeders came to my peg every day and there was potentially up to a mile to walk but I carried those because I just didn't know that you get to snaggy venues there's a lot of rocks at Tamar in particular but you could have a snaggy weed bed or, or any sort of obstruction and you need multiple feeders you don't want to I've always said don't carry just one feeder <laughs> you want three or four minimum of each size of feeder that you're most commonly going to use because uh, if you need a 30 40 gram feeder to reach a certain distance a certain size feeder you lose it you're knackered, aren't you? So you have to make do with something that's not quite right. So um, two of these came with me that fit nicely into this bag. Um, and then what I actually had on my side tray each time was just this little bag of feeders. Um, and that was just a couple of each size, a couple of everything I expected to need without having to get off my box and rummage around two bigger tubs. So let's have a quick look um, at my bigger tubs first, just to show you. So uh, hopefully you can see that. There's all sorts in there. I've got some uh, horizon distance feeders. Um, I wasn't sure if these would be needed because we wasn't chucking that far. So actually I didn't end up using these. But if I was chucking look sort of consistently past 40 meters and I think these would have really come into play because um, they contain a lot of bait, but it can't escape too easily. And obviously, as you can tell, what well, that's a beautiful shape of feeder. That's just going to fly like a bullet. So as it happened, they didn't come into play, but I took them just in case. Then I've got more, more traditional um, horizon cage feeders there um, can pack any sort of bait into there they'll it'll escape pretty quick but you can vary things I'll even tape some of these up as well um, and then I wasn't sure what the snag situation would be like so I had some of these rising feeders they've got little wings there that will just rise off the bottom if it was particularly bad uh, thankfully I didn't draw a peg where that these were needed but again they were there just in case and a bottom weighted cage feeder absolutely brilliant they'll stand up right like that um but they they're just brilliant they cast brilliantly but you can get plenty of bait in and they eject the bait really nicely as well so uh they they were a really important feeder to be having with me um and that's it oh i've got some uh, traditional side weighted feeders as well that's the um the old style matrix one which i still quite like and then we've got the newer ones there as well with a nice tapered lead on the back which are really nice as well uh, that one's 40 gram so uh, and that's a four hole feeder but 40 grams so it doesn't take a lot of bait but it'll get down fast so they were useful as well um, and I've got some uh, plastic feeders I took them up to 60 gram um, but fully expect only to be using like 30 and 40 gram um, and they're just a normal plastic open end feeder again very very useful and that's a, just a, a guru bait up feeder a small bait up feeder compared to what I was using um, on the day um, so that's that's my first tray and this is my second tray i'll just hold that again like that um i got some nisa ones i wasn't sure what, whether i needed anything like this a, a plastic and um, rocket style feed as it happened i didn't need them on the day um but i did have some little ones um i'm not sure if i've got one there which were the, which were kind of the main reason i got some that's it a little uh oh sorry that's a 20 gram they do a little they do a little um 10 um 10 gram um, and that's what I was wondering whether it'd be right for putting like sloppy ground bait in um, for roach and stuff on that short line. But as it happened, they didn't really come into play. Um, more plastic um, matrix feeders, absolutely lovely design, nice contoured weight, um, and a couple of sizes. That small size, they did that in 15 and 25 gram. That was really good for the short line. You can feed really sloppy ground bait or pack it with particles, but still um, 
but still um, it will eject nicely. More side weighted cage feeders, uh, more, more distance style feeders. What size is that? That's 40 gram, five hole, 40 gram. So that'll go a long way, as you can tell. Uh, more plastic feeders, more bottom weight feeders. Um, I got some little, these are the original Matrix cage feeders. That one's, I uh, can't read it very well. That's probably 20 gram, but they were nice. Little three hole feeders for catching roach and small fish, um, speed fishing when you, you just want to put a little bit in all the time. Um, and then what I'd also got, I'd got some um, some window feeders as well, some Preston window feeders, which are like, I think they call them a hex mesh or something. So they'll, they'll eject the bait a bit sooner. Um, and then I'd also, I've had these ages, but never used them. Then it's window feeders. Um, you can pack a lot more bait in, and obviously there's less um, there's less access for the for the for the water to get in. So obviously it will contain the bait a little bit more. Put a lot of par particles in there and get it down before it empties. So I've got them right up to I think that's that's 50 gram there, but I generally found 30, 40 gram was ideal. Um, 30 mostly. So um so yeah that's my um oh I've got some there's some uh, browning window feeders I've had for ages never used and that's a little bait up feeder as well which doesn't take any extra lead but um, generally I tend to use that on a shallow venue or if I'm just emptying the feeder immediately which wasn't really the case at Tamar so they they're all the feeders I took with me let's close that and move them out of the way and we'll have a look at the little bag next. This little tiny bag was all that was on, on my backside tray at Tamar. And um, it's nice to have a little bag with, with what you expect to be using. Um, whilst I've got two tubs stacked to the room of feeders that may come into play if, I, if necessary. But I've only got a small selection in there. Actually, there's quite a lot in there, but there's only a small amount on the side tray. Um, so without further ado, let's have a little look. And I'm gonna tip them out. I'm just gonna tip them out into a bowl. There we are, tip them out onto the bowl. Bring that up a bit closer so you can see. So that's what I carried with me um, to Tamar. I've got um, two sizes of baiting feeder, a proper Coke can and a smaller one. And then um, if I was chucking a long, long way, but still need to bait up the Guru one as well. So they're the three baiting up feeders that I was using. Just pop them in the bag. Um, now then, I even took a couple of little method feeders because I wasn't sure. In the practice day, I actually caught a couple of skimmers on a method feeder, um, and where I was told there was loads of liners and things in place, I thought, oh, I wonder if a method feeder would cut down on the liners. But as it happened, I didn't need them, but they were there just in case I needed to quickly clip some on, and obviously they'll chuck a long, long way. Um, so let's put them away. Um, and then um, my, my box standard feeders I was using, I was using, I did really like what I class as a three hole, 20 gram, and um, bottom weighted cage feeder that Matrix do. That was brilliant. Um, but what I did do with a few of them was just tape it up, just to, so I can really plug it in, use quite sloppy ground bait and stodgy ground bait, and uh, put more particles in. Um, if it was particularly deep, I was getting a count of like 10 on some pegs. So that was important. Um, even chucking short, um, you know, um, it's important to get that bait down before it empties sometimes. Sometimes you want it to empty quick, sometimes you don't. So bottom weighted cage feeders were really, really important. Um, the other option, which plugs it in a little bit more, is is a, a like a horizon distance style feeder. And obviously that's going to empty, but the bottom part does help contain the bait quite nicely as well. And I, I took them up to, uh, what's that, 30? 40 gram, 30, 40 gram. And again, I taped some up. Um, I'm gonna find a better solution to tape and I've got some shrink wrap that I'm gonna use. Um, Matrix do it, I don't know if they still do it, but they did some some um, some coats, um, some shrink wrap coats. Um, because obviously, if once that comes apart like that, it just creates a little bit of drag if, if the tape starts coming off. So, um, but taped up cage feeders was actually quite good, surprisingly good. So, um, so yeah, that, that and this distance style, you got a lot of wind, and obviously these are deep venues, and that you need to chuck it a long, long way. So, uh, so the uh, horizon style distance feeder is absolutely vital, really. Uh, let's put them to one side. Well, window feeders are up next, and uh, again, I, like I showed before, I've used the small and medium size um, Preston ones. I tried taping a few up; that was okay. Obviously, you've got the Dennis version as well, um, which is slightly larger window. 
um, and again I tightened some up just to remove those holes if it was particularly deep. Um, I did get two free feeders in the goodie bag um, that Preston kindly gave over to all the competitors. So I got two of their feeders as well and that was a solid style. And that actually would have been a better choice all round for um, Tamar I think and anywhere that's particularly deep. Um, and then after that I just got some small open end feeders, the small matrix ones. 15 and 25 gram, there's a 15 gram, and also some little three old feeders and some tiny, tiny thumbing in feeders, and that's what I used. So, yeah, so those smaller feeders, what I used or would have used if it became a roach uh, matching on the pegs I draw. Thankfully, it was all skimmer fishing where I was, but little, little K style feeders um, and some little tiny ones. You just you know, literally a pinch of ground bait each time going through the water. Um, or if you needed to drag them down a bit quicker, then a plastic style feeder or even a, a small window feeder would have been better. But um, I personally found um, in practice that a little cage was just nice and, and nice and light, 10 gram as well. You caught a lot of fish on the drop as well. But um, there's probably a lot more work for me to do on that style of feeder fishing. I'm by no means any expert in speed fishing for roach on the feeder. So, um, but yes, a, a, a selection of small feeders was, was the main key. Um, for that short line and bagging up with roach and little skimmers very very fast you know some people were fishing feeder fishing sort of eight meters out but anything from eight to sort of 15 meters seemed to be the optimum range for catching those smaller fish um in numbers so um but for me it was all about chucking mostly around 30 meters in in anything up to a 10 count um 10 second count of waters of very deep water and so i think bottom weighted cages and window feeders and distance feeders were were the thing that I used the most. And um, so yeah, hopefully that was a bit of a useful insight into you. It's definitely worth changing the feed. Just changing a feeder from a window to a cage or a plastic open end or something like that will get you another run of bites. You're changing your presentation all the time. Do it for a couple of casts, two or three casts, then swap back to another feeder. It's absolutely crucial. I mean, if there's one thing I've learned after a few days at Tamar is um, the difference in, in swapping things up and changing. Because there's, there's only so many things you can do with a feeder when you're chucking to a clipped up distance. But by swapping the feeder and changing what you pull in it and how you put the bait in it, whether it's sloppy or dry or lots of particles, no particles, um, then you've got your tail length and everything like that that you can change as well. But changing the feeder and then being having lots of feeders at, on standby is absolutely crucial at this sort of game and that's why i appreciate why these top feeder anglers are so good they know what feeders to swap to and they're properly on it so um i'm getting there hopefully um you just see my selection of feeders has helped you a little bit as well so um good luck with your feeder fishing and i'll see you on another video